So, you know what, you guys? A very, very important thing for you to understand is what you can negotiate for. Because make no mistake, in business, you usually do not get what you deserve, you get what you negotiate for. And if you have no idea what you actually should negotiate for, then don't expect anyone else to tell you. What, what I'm talking about is this, you finally got your gig and now, you know, hey, what are you supposed to get paid? What is a retainer? What is a buyout? What is a PD? You know, all of these things are very, very important for you to know about. So what I'm gonna do in this next clip is I'm gonna go ahead and talk about some of the basic ways that you can negotiate your employment agreement. Now this is for the musician that's not interested about being in a band or being a solo artist. This is somebody that's actually hiring out his or her services to other people that are already successful. So take these tips very seriously and let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you need to really talk about is wages and wages can work in a number of different ways. You know, are you going to get paid every two weeks? Are you going to get paid a flat annual fee? I mean, really, I've seen it work a number of different ways. But overall, you know, what you have to think about is a number of different things. First of all, you might want to look into understanding what sort of the going rate is. Now, where do you find out this information? Can you just go to your buddy and say like, hey, how much are you getting? No, because usually people won't tell you that. Even the person that's on the same tour bus as you, they're not going to tell you because they don't want to tell you they're getting 4000 a week when you're only getting 4000 400 because they don't want you running over to the employment and they're just going, why is he getting 4,000? You know, so people are going to keep their mouth shut. So where do you find this information out? Well, Mary, maybe the unions can provide some assistance. I'm not necessarily suggesting that you join the unions yet, but certainly their rules and regulations can provide some guidelines about the minimum scale wages to kind of at least put you into the ballpark. Okay. Now, whether or not you get minimum scale wages or not, some of the things you've got to consider are the fact that your expenses are going to still keep on going while you're out on the road. So you have to factor that in, right? You've got to be able to take care of your bills at home while also like having a little bit of money so that when you come back from home and you have to reestablish yourself in your community, right? And you're not working for the next two or three months, are you going to be able to survive? So something to think about. Other things to think about too is the stature of the artist you know how big is the artist how big is the tour how many dates how many uh you know what's the size of the venues and the number of people that are going to be showing up who's the record company you know all of these things um are factors that you need to consider and then of course finally who are you you know if you don't have any experience you know you know, look, you might be getting the gig because you don't have experience and they know that they can pay you a little bit less than the other person. So here you really have to kind of remember that it's not always what you earn, it's what you learn. You need to like earn some stripes on your belt, you know. But in any case, when it all boils down to it, you know, you have to do some research and you have to know about what uh, your wage should be and what you can negotiate for. So very, very important. The next thing to consider is what's called a retainer. So a retainer is payment that you'll get when your services are on hold. And uh, it's usually like 50% of what you would normally get. So let's just say, for example, you're on a big tour and someone says, hey, you know, it's December 10th. Let's take a break for the holidays. I want you guys to be ready on, you know, January 5th and, uh, you know, and be ready to go, you know. And you're like, all right, well, what do I do for three weeks, you know? So a retainer basically retains your services so that you don't do anything so that you're available for them. It's, I mean, think, think about like if you were taking a taxi or an Uber or something, right? You can't tell the Uber driver, hey, just stay here while I go in the mall and shop for two hours. And when I come back, you know, you're going to be here to continue driving me. But during that period of time, you know, you didn't run the meter, let's just say, for example. I mean, that's not going to happen, right? So a retainer retains your services while you are you know, on hold, so to speak, right? Now, you, you have to take this all with a grain of salt as well, because if you've got a really huge gig and they're paying you well to begin with, you might just want to shut your mouth about a couple of weeks and, uh, and not say anything. So it all depends on the circumstances, okay? All right.
The difficult thing about really understanding rehearsals is the fact that really nobody's the rehearsals don't generate money, right? So you know, someone might say, "Well, you know, I'm not getting paid for rehearsals, so why should I pay you? You know, we're going to get paid when we do the gig, and that's when I'll pay you." But you know, as a side person, it's 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 not your gig. It's their gig. You're providing a service for them. So I mean, think about this. Would you go into Starbucks and would you train for like three weeks at Starbucks every single day and not get paid? And then once you start the job, then you get paid. I mean, no, you wouldn't do that. Now, if this is some huge gig, again, you might shut your mouth because big gigs don't grow on trees. But you know what we're trying to talk about here is like what is like what what's right and what's wrong. And certainly, this big performer can afford to pay, to pay you. So you know what you know what really should happen is that you should get paid for your time all the time that your services are being used, right? So just uh, keep that in mind, all right? So rehearsals very important to think about. Per diems, it's Latin for per day. So on top of the money that you're going to get, um, you also get what's uh, what's called a per diem. Now the reason why, and I should have stated this before, is that when you get paid, a lot of times you're going to get paid on uh, a bi-monthly basis. So you're going to get paid every two weeks. So what do you do between that time, right? Before you get your check, you know? So you get what's called a per day, which is covering breakfast, lunch. And dinner, it's covering basic expenses on a per day basis. You don't have to pay that if you don't want. That's coming directly to you. And a lot of times, when I was on the road, I saved that money and came home with thousands of dollars, you know, and just went to the grocery store and bought some apples or whatever, and and, and did that and saved a lot in my per diems. Per diems. But uh, make no mistake, you know, you are supposed to get a per diem on top of the money that you get to do the gig as well. Um, the amounts vary, so I would suggest. Again, looking into the minimum scale wages um, of the uh, the unions to see what they are currently suggesting. And again, even it, you know, depending on on who the artist is and the stature, uh, it could be minimum, it could be double. I mean, it, so um, you know, but you have to kind of get a general sense of the amount, and you certainly need to know that there is something called a per diem that you can negotiate for, and you're entitled to. Okay. Buyouts um, are something that a lot of people do not know about. A seasoned, experienced people know about it, but a lot of newcomers don't know about buyout. So if you remember anything, just remember there's something called buyout. And if you say, "Don't we get buyout?" they'll know, or at least they'll think you know what you're talking about, right? So if you remember anything, just remember that buyout and say, "Hey, don't we get buyout?" You know. So in any case.、Um, What buyout is is a lot of times a promoter will have a contra- contractual obligation with the band to provide certain things backstage, like food, and when they don't do that for whatever reason, sometimes they buy you out of the contract, and they do that on a per head count. So if there's six people in a band, they might allocate a certain number of money for each person to go to go get food, right?、And、because they didn't provide it. Now, a lot of times when that happens. You know, either you are cut in or you're or you're not cut in. You know, seasoned guys are cut in. You know, someone comes up and goes, "Yo, you know, we got some buyout today." You know, so you know when you're out on a gig and maybe you notice there's not the typical food backstage like there is, you could say, "Hey, is there any buyout?" and see what happens. But again, a lot of people don't know about buyout, so now you do. All right. So you guys,、um, <clears throat> I provided a lot of tips for you.、Uh, again, this is for the person that is the musician that doesn't want to be in a band, doesn't want to be a solo artist, and just wants to hire out their services. It's also for the musician that's not playing with employers with limited budgets. You know, this is now when you're breaking into a little bit of the bigger leagues. And the reason why I'm talking about this is because you are going to break into the big leagues, right? That's number one. And number two, the problem is, is that when all of a sudden it happens, you're not going to know what to do. Because you have been playing for free for so long, right? Just trying to get a break, and then all of a sudden, bam! You have the opportunity to go out on the road, and someone says, "Ah,、hey, we'll pay you double what you're making at Starbucks," and you're like, "Yeah," you know. When in reality, you're entitled to so much more. 
So remember, it's not always, you know, you don't always get what you deserve, you get what you negotiate for. So you have to know what you can negotiate for. Again, I suggest you check out the, uh, the, the union and see what the, they, they suggest in terms of minimum scale wages and regulations. And also what I'd suggest is you go out, check out my new edition of my book. It's called Business Basics for Mus Musicians. It's now the orange cover. First one was the lime green cover. So check out uh, that book and, uh, and definitely uh, prosper from these uh, tips, you guys.